Welcome to episode number 40. We are over the hill today. My name is Frank Brock. This is the House of Orange Sports Channel. Thank you for tuning in with me. I'm going to bring you a Tennessee South Carolina preview as those two teams meet tomorrow night at 6 30 Eastern Time. As always, guys, thank you so much for the support. Thank you for you know any feedback. Thank you for the likes, the subscribes, the shares. Uh, it's greatly appreciated, and I ask that you continue to do this, continue to build this thing up. So I've talked about it a little bit. Just think my goal was 100 subscriptions coming in. It's uh, it's over 125 at this point. So going to keep this thing rolling, keep going, and you know I'll, I'll detail towards the end what i got coming up. But Tennessee, South Carolina, this is a big week for Tennessee basketball. This is a big week. Right now they're sitting 5-1 and one the conference. They're a half game out of first place just due to the win column. Alabama's 6-1. and one. Uh, if those even out, of course, in the loss column, Tennessee would be ahead on head-to-head -head on that. But currently, Alabama, first place by a half game. South Carolina, right behind a half game behind Tennessee at 5-2 and two in the conference. And then, of course, Saturday night at Rupp Arena in Kentucky. Kentucky's also right now 5-2. and two. So this is a big week for Tennessee and what's coming up. So let's kind of look at these games. It's in Thompson Bowling or the Food City Center at Thompson Bowling Arena. So. This team's hard to beat at home. I've I've kind of looked the numbers for South Carolina. I've looked at rankings and stuff, and I'll kind of go into my thoughts about them here in just a little bit. But here's what to look for with South Carolina. You're looking at overall this year, their main score is Michi Johnson, 15.7 points per game, uh, 4.1 rebounds, and he shoots a little bit under 35% from three-point range. He was a transfer from Ohio State. Their second leading scorer, this is overall, and I'll get into conference here in a minute, B.J. Mack, who come from Wofford, 13.9, 5.4 points per game. Uh, Taylon Cooper, 10 points per game, 4.5 4 rebounds. Miles Stute, 9.9 .9 points per game and 3.9. That's their main four scorers. Uh, they have, it looks like, about 10 guys who average – at least 10 minutes per game. So they play a lot of guys here, but they don't have a lot of size. Their biggest guy is Josh Gray, who's seven foot. He only averages about 6.7 minutes per game. So I don't know how much you'll see him along the way. And, you know, they have your guys around 6'8", 6'6", range, but it doesn't look like any kind of significant height advantage for South Carolina coming in. And then scoring, they're scoring about 73.2 per game, giving up 64 and a half. Field goal percentage, 44%. Three-point percentage, they're right at 35% on the year. Free throws right at 72. Rebounds, 36 and a half. Assists, 15 per game. They're averaging about 10 and a half turnovers per game. So now, if I go down and I get into conference, so those numbers, they're averaging about 69 points per game in conference, 67 are giving up. They have three guys that still, so B.J. Mack leads the conference lead South Carolina in conference scoring at 13.7. Michi Johnson 12.3 and then Cooper at 12.9. And then your next guys, Jacoby Wright, Miles Stute, 7.6, 7.5 points per game. In conference, they're shooting under 34% from uh three-point range, 35.4% rebounds, 14.1% assists per game. So I'm looking at how that matches up with Tennessee and looking at Tennessee stats. Of course, you know, right now on the year, Dalt connects up to 19 and a half in game. Uh, he's, a, he's at 28 points per game in conference. Jonas say do 11.9 for the year. Ziegler, 10.2 for the year. So Tennessee's averaging 79 and a half points per game. 45% field goals, 34% three-point. Right, 76% free throws, almost 40-point rebounds per game. 17 assists. A little under 11 uh, turnovers per game. So when looking at these teams and looking at, if you look at the uh, Ken Palm rankings as well. So Ken Palm has Tennessee ranked fourth overall, number two in defensive efficiency. They have South Carolina at 54. And none of their metrics across the board. This team, looking at them, I know they're playing good basketball. I know they beat Kentucky. I know they just beat Missouri. In Knoxville, at Thompson Bowling Arena, this team doesn't scare me. If it was on the road, maybe so. Um, but I just think Tennessee's a better basketball team. When it boils down to it, I think Tennessee's a better team. And I expect Tennessee at home to roll in this one. 
I, they found something. Ever since that Mississippi State game when they got down big, they found something. They went back to it again at Georgia. And I think in that first half at Georgia, I don't know if it was a case of like Vanderbilt this weekend where it was just a bad first half. But it wasn't a bad first half at Georgia. It was they came out of the gate flat in the second half. But, you know, I, I, I'll give credit because Wes Rucker wrote an article Sunday, or I guess it may have been Saturday evening, but anyway, talk about how Dalton Connect has changed how this team is. That team last year, this Tennessee team that played against Vanderbilt this past Saturday, last year would have lost that game because they have those nights. Nobody wants it. Nobody's hitting. You can see confidence. It's I go back to FAU that ended the year and just how abysmal that shooting was that night. The difference is Connect is that guy to take it over. On the road, incredible. He has been incredible this year. He wants it. He'll take it over. And, you know, this guy, man, he is, you know, I've seen people saying, you know, in my lifetime, he's the best Tennessee player there's been. I'm just an older dude who's seen more, but, I mean, this is the best individual player in an individual season that Tennessee's had in a long, long time down there. And that includes Grant and includes, you know, Lofton. And these guys were great. Don't get me wrong. I, I don't think they had that factor to the extent that Connect does. I, I just really don't. And that's not me taking anything away from them. Jordan McCray, Jordan McCray had a Mamba mentality as well. I just think Connect is that guy. He'll put the team on his shoulders. He's not afraid to do it. And he's, I mean, he's just been so big for this team this year. I mean, I, I switched to the conference stats for Tennessee. Like I said, Connect up to 28 points per game. Right now, you've got Jonas Adu. No, oh, wrong one. Jonas A. do 15 points per game. Ziegler, 14.3. And then it drops off to uh, Vescovy, 7.2. Vescovy's had a couple pretty good scoring games. Jordan Ganey's had a couple good scoring games. In a row. This team needs those guys. And I know people, uh, people's talked about Josiah, Jordan James, his game dropping off. He's still doing the little things. His scoring's not been there. I know I've talked about illness some. Uh, you got Meshach Awaka. That guy, man. He's got so much more potential, but he can't stay out foul trouble. Uh, and you're going to continue to see J.P. Estrella's minutes go up. I'm curious to see how Barnes uses that rotation tomorrow night. Uh, and that helps Adu stay out foul trouble. But we got to keep a waka out of it as well. Um, like I said, when I, I looked at these stats, I know South Carolina's a good team. Lamont Paris, Paris is doing a real good job with them this year. I mean, they come in right now. They are... Uh, 17 and three on year five and two in conference. That's a big turnaround from this team. Got to give credit. They they brought in a lot of transfers in the two years he's been there. Uh, really turned that thing around. If this game was in Columbia, it might scare me a little bit more. Uh, Tennessee's rolling tomorrow night. Tennessee's going to roll. I'm going to go final score Tennessee 82, South Carolina 67, and I don't even know that it'll be that close. Um, Again, I'm not taking anything away from South Carolina. They're a good team playing good basketball, but I look at their wins and their schedule, really, besides that Kentucky win, nothing impresses me about their resume. They're taking care of business, but I don't know. Uh, I don't know if it's fool's go. I, I think one of the Ken Palm metrics is funny. It's luck. And South Carolina's luck meter where they're at, they rank 25th on that. So, you know, I – I've said it on here. I don't watch a ton of basketball outside of Tennessee. I mainly watch Tennessee, but good basketball team Tennessee's playing tomorrow night. It's not a team that should come into Knoxville and and get the win. But I expect Tennessee to roll on that. So, like I said, I'll, I'll go with 82-67 Vols, and it would not surprise me if it's not more than that. I expect another big game out connect. Jonas Adu, I think this is another night that matches up well for him as well. But uh, and then of course add to it, Zakai Ziegler added to the Koozie Award list today for as one of the top point guards in the country. So I think I saw it was a list of ten. Well deserved for him the way he's playing. He keeps getting better along the way also. But uh, like always, guys, thank you for tuning in with me. I'm gonna probably right after this. I'm finally gonna go in with my way too early 2024 football prediction on it. I reserve the right to change my opinion along the way, but looking at everything, I'm going to go in, I'm going to examine it 
And and I'm not even going to break the teams down as much as I'm going to go right into that schedule and give reasons why and then to break the team down a little bit more as we get closer to spring practice and go on. But it's a it's a full pot right now with basketball in full swing, baseball right around the corner, football. I mean, it, football's always king in Knoxville. But, you know, like always, thank you for all the support. Make sure you like, subscribe, share this out. My name is Frank Rock. This is the House of Orange Sports Channel. Happy Monday. Have a good evening. Go Vols.